Welcome to Vantage with AI. In today's video, we're taking a deep dive into one-to-all animation, an alignment-free character animation and image pose transfer model built on WAN 2.1. What really sets this model apart is its flexibility. With just a single reference image, it can adapt a character to a wide range of motion patterns without requiring pose alignment, camera matching, or carefully staged inputs. Unlike many animation or pose transfer models that struggle when the reference image has a different pose, camera angle, or shot type, one-to-all animation handles these differences surprisingly well. Even when the reference image and the driving motion are completely different, the model can still produce consistent, believable results that closely follow the provided pose animation data. For example, this reference image is close-up shot facing left, while the pose input generated using open pose or DW pose via control net looks very different. Despite this mismatch, the output animation still follows the control net pose accurately, as you can see here in these outputs. In another example, the reference image shows the character sitting, while the driving video is a standing shot. Despite this mismatch, the model successfully adapts the motion and generates a video where the character is standing and dancing all while maintaining strong visual consistency. It also supports facial expression control through the face pose model. In medium and close-up shots, the character does a great job of reproducing facial movements and expressions, while in full body or distance shots, facial details are naturally reduced, which is expected at that scale. All of this makes one-to-all animation especially powerful for creative workflows where inputs aren't always perfectly matched and where long continuous motion really matters. In this video, I'll show you how to run one-to-all animation locally in Comfy UI using a workflow designed specifically to generate long length videos, not just short demos. We'll walk through the setup, the workflow logic, and how to get stable, repeatable results on your own machine. So, if you're interested in alignment-free character animation, flexible motion control, and pushing WAN 2.1 beyond short clips, this one's for you. Let's get started. Before we jump into the workflow, let's quickly go over everything you'll need to run one-to-all animation locally in Comfy UI. First, make sure you've updated Comfy UI along with the WAN video wrapper and WAN animate preprocess custom nodes to their latest versions. Once updated, you'll see that they now support the custom nodes required to run the one-to-all animation framework. This workflow is specifically designed to extend video length. It's no longer limited to short, five-second clips. First, we have the one-to-all animation model itself. You can download it in FP16, FP8, or even quantized GGUF formats, which is great news if you're running on low VRAM GPUs and still want to experiment with long video generation. I've created the quantized GGUF version specifically for this model, which you can download directly from my Hugging Face page linked below. Next, we'll be using the LightX T2V Distill LoRa. This is an important piece because it allows us to sample in as few as eight steps, making the whole process significantly faster without sacrificing too much quality. For the VAE, we'll stick with the standard WAN 2.1 VAE, which works perfectly with this setup and keeps everything consistent with the base model. For text encoding, we'll be using the UMT5XXL model as our T5-based clip encoder. And finally, for pose extraction, we'll need pose detection ONNX models, specifically WIT pose and YOLO, which are used to generate the pose data that drives the animation. All the download links for these models are listed directly inside the workflow, and I've also included them in the video description below so you can grab everything easily. And while you're down there, if you find this workflow useful, please consider liking the video, subscribing to the channel, and sharing it with others who are interested in Comfy UI, AI, and advanced animation workflows. It really helps the channel and lets me know you want more content like this. All right, now let's move on to the workflow itself. Now, let's go through the different sections of this workflow so you understand exactly what each part is doing. We'll start with the model section. This is where we load everything the workflow depends on. The base one-to-all animation model, all required LoRa's, the WAN 2.1 VAE, the Clip UMT5 XXL encoder, and the pose detection models. Once this section is set up correctly, you generally don't need to touch it again unless you're swapping models or testing different variants. Next is the control section. This one is very important for long video generation. 
Here you can define sampling window size. This determines how many frames are generated in a single batch when creating long videos. Overlap, the number of frames shared between consecutive windows, which helps achieve a smooth transition when stitching them together. Video width, video height, and frame rate of the video. Prompt section. Since the base model works as a T2V model, your prompt plays a big role here. If your reference character image is only partially visible, for example, a close-up shot, then it's important to describe the missing body parts, such as clothing, style, or overall appearance. This ensures that any newly generated areas remain consistent with your character. Next is the input section. Here we load the reference video, which provides motion guidance, the reference image, which defines the main character. One important thing to note here, if your sampling window size is smaller than the total number of frames in the motion control video, the workflow will automatically adjust and match the window size to the motion video length. If the motion video has more frames than the window size, then the defined window size is used as is. This makes the workflow flexible without requiring manual adjustments every time. Then we have the pose detection section, where all pose extraction happens. The key thing to understand here is that this model supports different camera angles and poses between the reference image and the reference video. This section lets you decide what drives the camera shot and framing. If you want the reference image to follow the camera angle and framing of the motion video, select Pose. If you want the motion to adapt itself to the camera and framing of the reference image, select Ref. Finally, we reach the sampling section. This is where all the magic happens. This section is divided into multiple subparts. In it embeds, generates the initial latent for the very first sampling window, loop embeds, prepares the latent inputs used to extend the video beyond the first window. Sampler, this runs in a loop, generating each window one by one using either init embeds or loop embeds as needed. At the top, you'll see the loop definition logic, which calculates how many windows are required to generate the full video and runs the sampler the appropriate number of times. Once all loops are complete, the workflow automatically outputs the final stitched video. And while the sampler is running, you can track the progress of the currently generated video in the preview window. Now let's move on to the testing part. For this test, we'll be using a reference video of a woman dancing on the street, set against a graffiti wall. This video will provide the motion and pose guidance. For the reference image, we'll use a close-up image of a woman, visible only up to her waist. This makes it a good test case, because the model will need to intelligently generate the missing lower body while maintaining character consistency. We'll generate two versions of this animation one with alignment set to pose, and another with alignment set to ref. This will clearly show how the model behaves when the camera angle and framing are driven by the motion video versus when the motion adapts to the reference image. All right, let's run it. This time, the alignment was set to ref. And you can see what's happening here. The pose animation from the reference video has been adjusted to match the pose and framing of the reference image. Now, let's try the same setup again, but this time with alignment set to pose. All right, now you can clearly see the difference. The reference image's pose, size, and placement have been adjusted to match the pose from the input video. The reference image is now centered inside the mask, closely mimicking the position and framing of the woman in the reference video. Here are the final results. As you can see, the identity of the woman from the reference image is very well preserved when the alignment is set to ref. When the alignment is set to pose, the facial features appear less defined and identity preservation is slightly weaker. This difference is not caused by the alignment mode itself, but rather by the large mismatch in camera distance between the inputs. In this case, the reference video is a long shot while the reference image is a close-up. When both inputs have a similar camera distance, the alignment choice has much less impact on identity preservation. In general, close-up shots work best. Facial structure, expressions, and even subtle facial movements are preserved very well, which is especially impressive given the alignment-free nature of this model. In long shots, facial details and expressions are naturally less visible. In fast motion scenes, you may also notice some blurring, which is expected, particularly when generating longer sequences.
Overall, these results clearly highlight the strengths of one-to-all animation in terms of flexible motion transfer, identity preservation, and scene adaptation. And that wraps up this video on one-to-all animation running locally in Comfy UI. All the model links and the full Comfy UI workflow are available in the description below, so you can try this setup yourself and experiment with long video generation. In the next video, I'll be doing a detailed comparison between one animate one-to-all animation, Mocha, and Steady Dancer to see which one actually performs best across identity preservation, motion quality, and long video stability. If you found this video helpful, please like, subscribe, and share. It really helps the channel and motivates me to keep bringing more advanced comfy UI and AI animation content your way. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time on Vantage with AI.